everyone. I am trying, I'm trying to go live for the very first time. Can you believe that I've never done this before? But I made a promise to you guys that I would go live to introduce myself one of these days. So here I am trying to go live. So if, if there's any subscribers, if any of you guys channel members who are here, hey. Hey, Herbert. Okay, so uh, thanks for, yo, this is my first time trying to do this live just to make sure that I know how to do it. How are you doing, Herbert? Hi, Shama. How are you? Very good. Wait, so... So let me ask you guys a question, okay? Because I'm so new to this live thing and I wanted to know, um, I'm doing good, thank you, thank you. I want to know if this is interactive. So can you guys, so if you guys can only hear me when I'm, when I live, but you guys can't, you guys can't talk back, right? Is that how it works? Oh, okay, I see. Okay, so I thought this was supposed to be an interactive thing, um, but I guess it's a really long overdue promise. I have, I have promised everyone that I would go live so that you guys know that I'm real, that there's a person behind the media. Uh, so, you know, here I am trying to fulfill this promise to you guys. And typically I'm very shy, so I, 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 don't, I don't like to go live for that reason, um, but you know, uh, so I guess one of the things we could do if you guys are here would be if you guys have any questions for me and I can uh, help address any of your questions, anything that you want to know about me, about the picks, um, about strategy or anything like that, I would be more than happy to answer all of those questions in today's live event. I suppose the next, now that I know how this works, in the next live event, I will broadcast it earlier so that people know. Um, so how long have you guys, I guess the first question is for, for some of you guys, um, Herbert and Shama, I know you guys have been writing in. How long have you guys been, oh, okay. You think market bottom is in? Um, no, I don't think the, the market bottom is in, in my opinion. Uh, I think the moment that the the Fed, uh, the Federal uh, Reserve, the moment that they increase the interest rate, um, that's when I think there is going to be a big, big, big correction. Um, and so that's the reason why in the last couple of days, you guys recall my previous video, I mentioned I was following what um, what their decision was. And they had mentioned that they're going to be keeping the interest rate where it is and it's going to be remain unchanged until 2023. So that should be good news for all of us. Granted, I did say I, I was watching a an update on Kathy Wood. I made a video on that um, a month ago, and she did predict that there, the Fed may change the interest rate before 2023. That's her prediction. So when you're when you guys are looking at, you know, um, my, I guess my, my, uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm watching the interest rate really closely, and so the moment that you, the moment that I see there's, there, there's going to be a change in the interest rate, then I'm going to be making some, some changes to my portfolio. Okay, thank you for that question. Okay, I've... thoughts on IBCU. Okay, so this is a, a good question. Actually, I have been, uh, I have been. I've been looking at this company and I'm researching it. I am contemplating on whether or not I'm going to release a video on it. But Jermaine, uh, stay tuned because uh, all of my, and if you guys have joined my YouTube channel, you guys know that I won't release a video on any company until I've bought into the company so that you guys can be sure that I am a vested investor. But IBCU definitely is really hot right now. I know that. 
Uh, so I am looking into it. <laughs> HCMC is giving people a heart attack. Okay, um, so if you have if you have seen all of my videos on HCMC, um, my I, I am I, I think I have about three to four million shares of HCMC. Um, I will talk about ABB a, next. Um, HCMC and this is my, you know, this is for me. I don't think that you know you have anything to worry about with regards to HCMC. At least I don't have any heart attack over it because I've been adding to my position um, over this time because there hasn't been any fundamental change in in the company or in the lawsuit since we've started. I know a lot of people bought into the company because of the lawsuit. Um, until we have some fundamental changes, then that would give us reasons to 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 panic. If you watch my most previous video after I did a an analysis of their arguments, um, you can understand there is and and that there's no that the uh, Philip Morris had no uh, argument, nothing tangible. So there's no reasons to be alarmed. At least I am not alarmed. Okay, let me address the next question. A A B B. Okay, so I'm so glad that you asked this question because I was going to do a video and I'm going to do a video on AABB after this live session. Um, you know, I am I'm a, I am very long on AABB. Um, I owned um, I owned about three hundred and seven thousand shares of AABB, but in the last two days. You know, I I sold uh, two hundred thousand shares. Um, hope and and now waiting for the dip to happen because I'm hoping to increase my holding in AABB. Um, AABB is definitely one of the um, top holdings in my portfolio. Okay, so AITX, um, AITX, they recently just um, just uh, rented out. Um, a building, um, and I'm going to do a release on that. I still have I have not sold a single shares of AITX. I plan on um, I plan on averaging down, um, so I'll be buying a little bit more AITX. I think that one um, I think do have about 500 to 600 percent left. Um, so there's going to be uh, there's still upswing. Okay, next question. I have about five million shares and worry about the reverse split. Hate the reverse split. So, are you, Herbert? Are you talking about the uh, HCMC? A possible reverse split for HCMC. I, I think there are some rumors. Uh, if you're talking about HCMC. Um, there are there have been some rumors about a possible reverse split, um, you know, which we all know we, we're not very happy about that. But that is definitely a concern. I agree with you. Uh, Daniel, uh, yes, I actually have a lot of companies that. I have not released videos on yet because as you guys know, um, these videos takes a really long time. I, I spend a lot of time on research. Um, and so when I invest by myself, it's so much easier. But when it comes to recording and then putting all the script together, it takes a very long time. Um, so you, can, you guys can probably talk to some of the joined members that have already joined uh, my channel. I would list some of the companies that I think are 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 good are good buys in the communicate uh, community tab, and and then when they ask me why I think it's a good play, then I explain it to them. So so yes, I do have quite a few number of of uh, companies that I have not uplisted yet. Uh, invested in there are um, yes. I, I am looking at, you guys all know that, you know, I have had a lot of requests for research. So um, so whenever you guys give me a company to research, what I do is I, I uh, 
keep note of all those companies and I go through um, all those companies. And if I find a very disruptive company, then I would release the video. There are actually quite a few um, good companies that you guys have brought to my attention. Um, and I will release those videos. But if you guys want, do you guys want me to release some videos um, of companies that are not so good? Because Hello, hell, Jumpy. You join. Hey, how are you doing, hell, Jumpy? Um, but um, back to the previous question. Do you guys want me to release videos of companies that you guys gave me that I found information that are not that are not very good, uh, or do you guys want me to just release videos that you guys gave me that I think are good? Because there were quite a few companies that I found information that were just so bad that if it was up to me, I would, you know, run away from those companies. Um, okay, so for speculative questions, and this is why I really hesitate to give speculative plays, um, because number one, with OTC penny stocks, I really don't want to pump um, a lot of companies because Mm, because I know a lot of YouTubers do that. And I think when you pump a company, it just adds a lot of confusions. Um, and so you see my most of my videos, I present to you very objective information. And in very, very, very rare occasions, would I give you a, would I give you a, a, a price speculation? As you guys all know, you know, the stock market is, you know, believe it or not, but it's not really free. It's being controlled by the Federal Reserves through the interest rate. So I think YouTubers that tells you, oh, this company is going to be a dollar within a year. I have no idea where they would base their decisions on because all of that depends on mo monetary policy and monetary decisions. Uh, so I would hesitate to give you why, where I think AITX would be within a year. If I think, if, now, if we if we keep everything at the status quo, meaning no changes, no substantive changes in monetary policy, um, and with their expansion and they're actually able to show us um, sales and growth, um, I don't. I know a lot of ATX fans may hate me for saying this, but I think it's going to take them a little, you know, like a little a little bit to get to a dollar. Because with artificial intelligence and robotic, it's still not yet um, it's not yet mm, a, 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 a a major um, mainstream con concept yet. So people still need to know about it, and it's gonna be more than a year for for all of that to be more ma mainstream. Okay, so next question. SSFT. I've taken I have taken a look at that company. I have not deep dive into that company yet. I will um, um, uh, I, 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 I know I, I know I promised you that I was gonna look into this company so uh, so I I, I, um, <laughs> I will continue to. I have a very you guys have given me a very extensive list to look at. So far I've weeded out companies that I don't think are good. Do, you, do I have an opinion on I, I, INCT? Okay, I don't have an opinion on it yet because I have not looked at it yet, but I will write it down to, I will add it to my notepad where I keep all of your recommendations and then I will look into it. Um, but after this, I'm going to put a poll in the community tab. Do you guys want, um, do you guys, the, 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 the tab will be, do you guys want me to release? my opinion on companies that I don't think are good because of, you know, um, of red flags that I see based on the research, or do you guys want me to just release videos on companies that I find from your recommendations that are good. So be sure to go to the community tab after this and take the poll because I want, because like I've mentioned before, doing the recordings takes a very long time. So I wanna make sure that we focus on doing things that are good for our community, our, the, the media community. Okay, but let me write down INCT first. 
And also, if you guys could do me a favor, because I do take all of your recommendations very seriously. So whenever possible, you make sure that you give me um, to do research on, you know, one of your most destructive best plays. Um, and because it takes, I, when I do um, my due diligence, it does take a lot of time because I do look at everything. What are some market indicators you, okay, next question. What are some market indicators you look before investing? Treasury yields, gold, silver ratio, inflation, real estate, et cetera. Red cocoa. Oh man, that is a very, um, that's a very, ah, that's a very big question because it really depends on the company, um, company specific. Um, but I will tell you my general, my general reasoning for when I pick a company, number one, it has to be in an emerging market. The reason why I pick emerging market, and you guys, if you guys been following me for a while, you guys know that I only look at disruptive companies um, because I think that be, because of the inflation situation coming in, and we just don't know when the inflation is gonna set in, when the, the Fed's just gonna hike up the interest rate, I believe that if we invest, I believe that if I put my money into emerging markets, then I'm not going to suffer through the um, through the the big correction that's coming up. So for that reason, that's my biggest thing that I center on when I make my selection. Second question. Sorry, I just got here. Yes, what's the what is the future of AITX? You know, um, I, I am um, AITX. Okay, so I will share with you my, how about this, in order to answer this question, because this question is speculative and I'm not an employee of AITX, but let me just give you my, what my uh, understanding was after I did the interview with the CEO. Um, and if you guys recall, that was, you know, that was Steve's, uh, Reinhardt's first interview ever on YouTube. And I did that when I first started YouTubing. So I had, I had prepared so much research to prepare for that interview with that CEO. And my impression that I got from S Steve, and as he, he, he explained it in his interview, he said that robotics and artificial intelligence, especially within the phys physical security space, needs a lot more time. Um, in order to be mainstream, like I've mentioned before, I think that there is definitely, I think that there is definitely room. Um, there's definitely a lot of room for growth. And if you watch my most recent video on AITX, my thinking is, if they focus more on the self software development to improve the 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 robotic know-how, um, and, uh, and then I think there will be more competitive. Because if you look at Nightscope, um, there's going to be more competition coming in. And so AITX is going to have to improve their game. And so I think that what they're doing right now is they're hiring a bunch of software engineers in order to further develop their robots, so which, is, which is a good, um, to me, that's a good development. So if they continue to do these types of uh, these types of investment, then I think that the future is looking bright for them. Um, okay, so next question is by Curtis Martin. Okay, hi everyone. Okay, so um, AABB, I think that uh, I, that's one of my largest, one of my biggest holdings is AABB. So I, I think it's huge. Um, I did not cover this in the last video, but you guys all know the you know with 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 the token that there, there has and, and like this is just my opinion you know in asia people love to buy gold and they to, like to keep gold so the fact that you know their 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 focus is in asia and i think this is a shanghai based company um it's then i think that it's a smart move uh, for that reason, I move so much of my money into AABB, and uh, mine. I have I have a, 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 a large holding in mine as well. Um, 
Monerico, I think it's in the right. Right now, cryptocurrency is really hot. So it's, it's the right play. So I, I am bullish on both of those. Uh, wasn't too loaded. Uh, how do you feel about Zom in the long term? I have 15,000 share with an average of 0.29. Zom, Zom is a company that I covered when I first started this YouTube channel. I think Zom is a disruptive company. It will have a future. Um, but I have to say, it, it, I I'm very I I think Zom is good. I still hold I still hold Zom shares. Big correction as an ignorant. Okay, the next question as an ignorant college student, can you tell us more about a big correction? Also, besides investing, what else are you doing to prepare for that? Um, okay, so I think diversification is really important. Um, as I've mentioned, I think I don't know if I've shared with you guys already, but my this, the goal that I set for myself was to have a million dollars by age 40. And I actually reached the the million, um, my net worth of a million dollar at age 37, which was um, a few months ago because I my birthday was uh, last month. Um, what I've learned is that you have to diversify. And I don't mean to diversify. When I say diversify, I don't mean to buy like, you know, a gazillion stocks. If you diversify by buying a gazillion stocks, to me, that's not good. Um, I, I will release a video to talk about, to me, the danger of, you know, being highly diversified, of having a, a highly diversified portfolio. But you want to buy real estate. So I, I bought real estate um, from, from, my, um, from my gains that I have from the stock market. So I give you an example. When I was I think when I had just graduated from college, um, after my senior year, no, okay, wait, I bought, no, no, I bought my first um, shares of Facebook when it first came out. I think that was in 20, uh, 20, 2012. And I made, um, I made very good money in Facebook, sold all of Facebook and bought my first house. And so that house is being rented out and I collect passive income. So, you know, you want to diversify your income um, to prepare for these types of market corrections or, you know, if there is ever a crash um, so that you have you have money in, in, you know, in every different pockets. OK, next question. E C E C E Z O S T T T T T OK, OK. Next question from. Uh, Meng, Meng, sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, you're asking me about ECEZ. Okay, I don't know that company, but I'm going to um, write it into my notepad and then I will look it up. And then the next time um, you can ask me for my thoughts on it. ECEZ. All right. Jermaine have questions about airline growth, Asian airline growth. Okay, this is my thoughts on airlines. So essentially, this is a question about post-pandemic. So if we're looking into these types of companies, obviously, when everything resumes, airline is going get, to get back to its feet. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll see positive growth. But... I think when it comes to investing, I think there is also time consideration. Yes, we know airlines is going to pick back up, but we have to prioritize. We see which companies, which sector is going to pick back up a lot faster than airlines. So, for example, um, if I'm going to... Um, I, I used to have so many shares, have so much of my money in airlines. Then I realized that there are other, there are other disruptive companies that I can move my money into that I can make money a lot faster. I give you an example. Okay, I bought a bunch of uh, American Airlines, uh, United Airlines, and it did go up. I think it went up like twenty-five or thirty percent or so 
in the course of, I want to say three months, I saw all of that and I bought into, um, uh, which was it? I think if you watch my videos, I did mention earlier ones, I think I bought into um, bio nanogenomics and I bought bio nanogenomics when it was about a dollar and 25 cents or so. Um, if you go back into my playlist, when you see my first release on bio nanogenomics, you know that that was the first time I bought to it. And it went from a dollar fifty cents or something all the way up to ten dollars or eleven dollars within a month or so. And so then I sold that. Um, not not all of it, but but you can you you see where I'm going with this, right? You want to look for companies that are emerging, that are disruptive because you can um, you can experience, exponential growth faster. Okay, next question. Uh, hey, Ronte, thank you for your, um, for, for your positive encouragement. Uh, Ron said, proud of you, Andrew, nice work. Thank you so much. <laughs> Curtis Martin, thanks for smashing the like button. And Ryan Brown says, okay, you want me to check into SWRM? S W R M. Okay. Would you sell V X R T? Okay. Actually, I can't answer that question because I don't. Um, I don't own V X R T. Right now, I can tell you what. What? Right now, what I'm trying to do right now is um, since this whole since this whole situation, this market correction have lasted a lot longer than we have anticipated. I've been spending a lot of my time to average down on companies that I think are heavy hitters. And so like I've mentioned before, I've been moving a lot of my money to um, ABB. Um, and because of, of that, I was able to, Re, um, recuperate all of my losses. Um, I can, I can, I can honestly, I, okay, I'll be very honest with you guys. Okay. I can tell you that I was down, I was down $170,000 within like, it's been a month, right? I was down $170,000. And so I, I start to move my, my portfolios around and you, you guys know, AAB and B, AABB have been just killing it this week and i recuperated all my losses from other companies just from just just from that play okay next question can can you okay uh from sean desiree can you check out bsrc also what's your just what's your top disruptive penny stock okay the question is BSRC, BSRC. Okay, before I continue to answer uh, these individual questions, I just want to just give a shout out to all of you guys for supporting my channel and all of your comments and all of your likes and all of your subscribe. Um, I, I'm just so blown away by the support. You guys all know that when I first started this channel, it was just to keep me accountable to making just you know more money so that I can retire early. You guys all know that I just my, my goal right now is just to retire in two years, um, and and then you know just do other stuff. And so I, I'm hoping to make you know two more million dollars so that I can retire. I did not I did not think that I the the channel would grow so much in just a span of less than three months. Um, and sometimes it's, even though it's so much work, but because of all your positive support, I don't mind sharing some of these plays and, and, um, and all these videos. So, uh, you know, just, just thank you so much for that. This, the, the positive energy, I just really love it. Um, so I'll try to, to continue to give you guys more videos. Okay. All right. Let's go back to answering some of your individual questions. I'm only buying AA, uh, this question from Curtis Martin. I'm only buying AABB. Uh, I'm not buying AABBG. 
Matt Sutani, Andrew, would, would love your update on Shrewcoin, Dark Pulse, and also on Bioelectronics. Okay, I will write all of this down. I definitely will work on the Shrewcoin situation. Um, I've heard a lot about Dark Pulse. There's just, there's actually a lot of up and coming companies right now. And um, actually I'm working on a, um, on a video on an EV play right now, a penny stock that is in, that's making electric vehicle. I think this one is gonna be an exciting one. So you guys have to stay tuned for this one. You guys all know that electric vehicle is super hot, right? Uh, so I think EV plays are great. Remember, you guys, NEO used to be a penny stock and it's trading at what, 40 something dollars right now? Uh, so uh, stay tuned for that video on um, my EV, uh, my penny stock EV play. <laughs> Curtis, thank you. You should uh, thank you for the positive endorsement. Curtis Martin says, I've been telling everyone I know about you. And Sean Desiree, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate your um, positive support. Um, yeah, I I think um, um, yeah, I, I think you know, I think penny stocks definitely. You guys, just because they are disruptive, it doesn't this. It does not necessarily mean that they are, uh, you know, they are a for sure play. I just, I just want you guys to know that OT penny stocks are very risky. Okay, so when you look at my DD, my videos, you always want to make sure that you do some more research into these companies before you start a position. And always start. I always start a position by adding. A starting position means you put a little money in first. To sort of see how the plays go before you put more money in, like that's how. I, and I, I, I don't. I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm not giving you guys advice. I'm telling you guys what I do. So if you see a company that you are interested in, you have, you know, it's good to have a starting position in because with human psychology, the moment that you have a starting position, all of a sudden you become interested in the company, and then you research and you read into the company, and when you have full understanding of the company, then that's when you begin to, you know, build up your, your position. So as much as I know that some of you guys have expressed that you guys trust my picks and it has worked out for you, but always make sure that you do your DDs, okay? Because sometimes I may have missed something. I tried my best to do as much as possible in terms of research and presenting the information, but there's so much information that there's not possible for me to put all of that into a 10 minute video or sometimes less than 10 minute video. So be sure to do your DD. Uh, okay. Aziz, uh, Aziz, Aziz, sorry if I'm killing your name. Your question is, do I think that SANP and mine will make it? I have positions in both. Um, okay, so I tell you this. I would not release a video unless I have uh, a position in those companies. And when we talk about when we talk about SANP and mine, just bear in mind that they're sub penny stocks. So you're investing in when, when we're talking about subpenny stocks, we're talking about a lot of risks associating with subpenny stocks. They're not even a penny yet. So you're at, you're, you're building, you're, you're with a company that's building up from scratch. So because of that, there is not a lot of information to be had. Some of these companies are pink, no information. So a lot of it is that, a lot of it is you have to extrapolate and you make, you bring in the, um, there's a lot of disconnect, which then you would have to, you know, sometimes I have to go find articles here, articles there, you know, all kinds of other information just to bridge the gap. Um, and that's what you have to do when it comes to sub penny stocks. And there's more risk to it. So obviously, I think for me to put my money into these companies, I think that there is some, that, that you know, I, I think that there is some, um, 
some gains to be had. Um, so that's why I'm doing it. But um, but I want everyone to know that you know with sub penny stocks there are a lot of risks associated with these stocks. IPNF. Eddie, I will look into it. Ryan Brown. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Brian Ryan said that I, I, I put out good information. Um, and Ryan, the reason why I put out good information is because I'm invested in these companies. And so I have to do the research before I put my money into these companies. And, you know, and then after that, then I share with you guys all that I know about that company. Um, so the fact that you said it's good company, it means it, it you guys are giving me a reassurance that I am, you know, I'm investing in the right company as well. So thank you for your support. Uh, Brooklyn Stock Shop. Yes, AITX. Um, AITX was actually the, if you go through my channel, I've only had this channel for three months. And AITX was the first company that I was so excited about. You know, I did so much research on it. I even reached out to um, the CEO to get the first ever YouTube interview. And I have to, I have a, actually have a story about AITX. Um, during that time, I only had 800 subscribers, but I was so excited about AITX that I wanted to get more information on it. So I signed up to go into the Discord and trying to figure out who Steve is and how to find him so that I can get an interview with him. And you, go, and you know what was so discouraging to me? Um, after Steve received my invitation to do the interview, um, there were some AITX um, fans who were making really bad remarks saying, why would Steve agree to do a interview with a, a, a YouTuber who's a nobody? Because at that time I only had 800 subscribers and I was, you know, I was so uh, discouraged by that. Um, so, but I'm so glad that, you know, a bunch of people came out and said that the interview turned out to be good and informative. Um, but so I want to tell you guys, you know, always have big dreams, always have a goal. And even if people put you down, don't be discouraged, but don't be discouraged by it, but work hard to prove all of those people wrong. And I'm a big proponent of goal setting. Um, you know, if you, if you have, if you have a goal, you set it and the whole universe is going to figure out a way to help you out. So like I mentioned, I made a million at age 37. I did not think that um, I, my goal was 40. Um, but because when you set a goal, you're like constantly thinking about it and you're constantly talking to people about it. And, and I've met so many people who gave me so much, such good knowledge um, that I was able to reach my goal a lot quicker. So if there's anything to take away from this live um episode is that you know you always have to set a goal and always be excited about those goals um, and put a time to your goals a lot of people says, says oh i want to be a millionaire i want to retire but if you don't put a time a deadline on yourself you're not going to be proactive in your thinking okay next question uh, ronte says retirement in two years i'm with you on that cheering for you i'll be right behind you, you absolutely um, I, I did not think it was possible because originally my goal was to retire at age 45. Uh, but if you guys watched one of my diamond hands video in that video, I talk about a friend that I met and he just taught me so much in the last month that I have known him and he changed some of my plays. Um, you guys know that I was I invested in Tesla in 2017. I bought I bought a lot of shares when it was about you know like $95 or something. And so uh in one of the videos that I was introducing you to the house that I'm living in right now that, that's under construction, um a lot of that proceeds came from um selling Tesla. But I also sold a lot of Tesla to buy into OTC penny stocks and I was so shocked with the amount of money that you could make from penny stocks if you make the right pick. Uh, I, I was so shocked. I mean, this whole week, I'm still in shock by 
my account when AABB just, you know, shot up like that. Um, so that's why I think it's completely possible for me to retire in two years. Okay, Shama said that he thinks the most destructive field is blockchain, NFT, and space ETF that Kathy Wood is building, EV and SPACs at a pause. Yes. Oh, so you mean disruptive, not destructive. Um, that's Yes, um, according to Kathy Wood, she said that blockchain is the next fang. So it's going to be the next, you know, EV. I agree with you. Blockchain have blockchain, crypto, you know, all of that has just been on on a tear. And the reason why I think it is is because people are so fearful of the upcoming inflation. And as you know, Bitcoin, for example, there is only a limited amount of Bitcoin. And so these are types of, um, it's, it's a good remedy for inflation. Obviously, there's a lot more than that. But because of that, I think that's one of the reasons why I like it. Shama, yes, Shama Haig said he grew his trading account from 300,000 to 700,000 in 12 months. Absolutely. I I have never seen such such enormous growth in my portfolio until I went to OTC penny stocks. It's absolutely true. But what I've learned is this. What I've learned from my friend is this money moves around. So maybe this year the money might be in OTC market. But perhaps next year it may move to NASDAQ. We don't know. We have to track the, the movement of money to see where it is. But I think that this year money is in OTC. Okay, so Betty, better gelfish. You're asking about EFER with the video you showed last time. Any updates? It has small. Uh, yes, I plan on doing an update on EFER. Um, if you guys know that, if you know that I um, I did a recent update on EFER on the weekly update um, on their subsidiary, but most most likely the most update on EFER is going to be um, looking specifically into all of their subsidiaries because I'm trying to figure out whether or not they're just going to go into solar only. I want to see what else they're going they're going to go uh, be going into because that's going to be you know it, it could be a big hit if they go into electric and solar and all of that. Oh, the sound is gone. Can you guys still hear? Can you guys still hear me? Uh Okay, okay. Good. Someone said that my my sound is gone. Okay. Um All right, so let's go next next question. Has penny stocks, small caps companies been incredibly rewarding in 2020, but the sentiment regarding penny stocks is negative? Evans, um, thank you for your question. I think, um, you know, I, I, I know I know about the negative sentiments that's going that's been going on because I'm seeing in my channel um, people have been panic selling because the Federal Reserve's met last Tuesday and Wednesday because people thought that they're going to be um, changes in monetary policy, specifically the interest rate, that they're going to be uh, raising it. And so people were panic selling. They wanted to sell everything because they anticipated um, that and inflations to follow. And so people were actually coming to my channel. A few people were blaming me, saying that, you know, all of your picks are trash and you know, I'm all red because of you and all these sort of things. And I, I didn't say anything, but I want to just tell people that, you know, the entire the entire market is down, uh, not just a specific play. So um, if I have that much power um, over penny stocks, whether or not it goes up or down, then, you know, I would I would be retired by now. I would not be still. um and, you know, try to sell, you know, try to try to make my two million so that I can retire. But that's that's 
that's the one thing that we have to be able to decipher. Is it just the company that's going down or is it just or is it the the overall market sentiment? So you guys always remember, OK, stock markets, bond yield has an inverse relations. So if bond yields, bond yield goes up, the stock market is going to be it's going to be down. So they have this kind of a this this kind of a, a, a relationship. So you see um, that article that I read to you guys a few days ago. Um, we did talk about that. Some people did ask him about bonds, about buying back bonds and controlling the bond uh, rates, the ten-year bond rate, because because that's just causing um, a lot of panic for people. But he said that he's not gonna mess. He's not gonna mess with it. He's gonna leave it as it is. So, from what I know, the market is not going to recuperate because bond yields are are still high. Okay. Uh, let's see. Has next question. Hey, Carlos Mejia. Hola, cómo estás? Have you? Have you tried? You you try. I know that you've tried joining my uh, as a member. Um, have you succeeded in joining? Are you still having a, a hard time? Maybe you want, might want to try a different card to see if that works because other people have joined my channel and they said that they have not had any problem. Okay, so I know that I have enough. I have uh, another fifteen minutes to have with you guys uh, before I will have to go to create more videos to release for you guys to see this week. Um, so I'll try to be quick on some of these answers. But if you guys like, if you guys like these live sessions, then I will try to go on live chat more often. Um, but I, like I said, I'm very shy when it comes to doing things live. I used to stutter a whole lot, and so when I'm nervous, then I could I, I stutter. So you see, I stutter sometimes still. Um, for that reason, I always say that oh, I I will live for people who've joined because the group is a lot smaller. Okay, sober trade said, "I like tour dancing video from <laughs> the other week. Good dancer. Yes, I can hear you. Hey, sober trade. So I actually uh, I used to live in Mexico. I was living in Mexico City for two years, and so that's probably the reason why you guys see that I you know sometimes I would send salutations in Spanish because I speak some Spanish, and there I learned how to you know I learned how to salsa. I learned how to you know do bachata, merengue." Cumbia. So dancing is fun. Um, you know, when I retire, I'm going to go back to Mexico and visit some friends and just going to be, you know, bringing, you know, drinking Bohemian beer and salsa like, all week. Jermaine, hello. Rick Vanegas, hello. Jigsaw Trades, hi. Um, okay. And there's Andres Castaneda again. Thank you. I just love seeing the fact that you guys have joined, and I really uh, love your support so far. It gives me a lot of energy. And I live, I actually live, now I live in um, Virginia. Hi, Kenji Chang. How are you? And um, Sober Trades, I have to say, he, uh, Sober Trades does a really good job um, re uh, covering. Um, Monerical. So he's been he's he he's been investing in this company for a very long time. So uh, he covers less less companies than I do. So if you want to if you want more in depth information on Monerical, then you know visit his channel. It's a great dude. Hi Curtis Martin. Yes, I I, I just hope that. Um, I just hope they have more releases. I love, with regards to HCMC, I love reading legal documentation. As you've seen um, one of my uh, videos, I was going through, I was you know, breaking down all the legality and all the wordings in the legal documents. Um, so I hope that they release more of those so that I can, I can do more videos to break things down for you guys. I enjoy doing those types of videos. Jigsaw trades. No, you guys don't have to be wait 10 years from now to be like me. No, I I honestly think that, you know, if you seriously 
seriously put your time into researching the companies that you uh, want to invest in. I give you an example, okay? So um, I had a, a a subscriber join my channel, and you know he said, Andrew, I really trust your picks, and I want you to look at um, all of my picks right now. He so he sent me all of his picks, and he said, Andrew, can you just look through all of this and tell me you would think, tell me what you think. So I just looked at his list, and I'm not kidding you. He had like at least 40 or 50 picks. And I said, okay, I'm thinking that you're more of a gambler than an investor because you probably don't remember all these companies that you've put mo your money into. So I told him the first thing I want you to know is you need to get rid of companies you don't even know, you, 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 that, that's in your portfolio that you don't even know about. That's gambling money. Every single dollar is very precious because within penny stocks, that's like 100 shares. If it's more than that, if it's sub penny, right? So he's cleaning it up. And then after that, I ask him, after you're done cleaning it up, the next time you come to me, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you, how is this company disruptive? You're going to have to give me an answer why you think it's disruptive, why you think it's going to go to a dollar. If you cannot answer that question, then you need to get rid of it. You have to have a purpose when you're investing. And you have to know where you're putting your money in. So investing is not like gambling. Don't treat it like it's a gamble. You have to do your research. You have to understand exactly why it is that you're putting your money into this. Okay. What is your take on OZSC? I am trying to buy more um, OZSC at a lower price. So I'm setting up it at a very, you know, a, a very low point. It hasn't hit yet, but I'm still waiting for it to hit. Evan, I'm glad that you found this live sessions uh, helpful. I appreciate everyone's support. We'll do more. Um, we'll do more once I get more comfortable with this process. I've mentioned to everyone that I I get very nervous in front of the camera because I stutter a lot. Um, so that's the reason why I prefer to not go live so I can do edits. Um, so the more I, the more comfortable I get in front of the camera, then I will try to go live more often. Okay, all right. Well, Carlos, just continue to to try. So I hope to have more. You know, once you join, I I look forward to having more offline conversations with you. And you know, until then, let me know if there's anything um, you need me to help you with. Roy Addison, you said HCMC and OZSC, please. Uh, when you ask me this question, you mean more update on these on those two companies? Is that what you want? If so, then let me know. Sober Trades. Yeah, we should definitely do a live stream together. Uh, I actually have had a couple people uh, have requested to do that, and I think it'll be very fun. So let, let's do that. You know my email address, so just like shoot me an email, and we can set something up. Hey, Lord Scorch, thanks for joining the live chat. Uh, great, I, 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 you know, this is my first time doing this live chat. I'm so glad that you guys are um, thinking that it's informative and it's helpful. Uh, so thanks again for your support. We'll try to do more of it. Curtis Martin asked, do you have a pay extra channel? I don't know what that means. Uh, what, what does a pay extra channel mean? What new videos are you coming up with? Um, I have quite a few videos this this week. I have so many, um, a lot of interesting ideas to give to you guys. I know that I've been giving you guys a lot of plays, right? But I think I want the next video that I release, I want to release a video on strategy because I think that, um, I think that too many plays just confuse people. Uh, I think strategy would definitely be more helpful, especially for beginners. So uh, you can uh, you can expect more more strategy uh, videos and other types of videos uh, other than plays. Because I think if you don't understand the strategy behind it, you may look through a video and not understand why is why is it that Andrew's recommending this or not recommending why is why is it that Andrew's presenting this information. 
Uh, next question. Warm AKA, but you, wait, you're in Virginia as well? I'm in Alexandria, Virginia. What? Email me where you are. If we are close, then we should definitely meet up for like coffee or something. I'm, I'm fairly new to Virginia. I just moved here for a job. So I'm still new to Virginia. So hit me up. I would definitely um, like to meet more people in the Virginia area. I'm so glad that you're around here. Kenji Chang asked, is it too late to invest more in AABB? I've got some shares, but not a lot. Okay, so Kenji, I don't know if you missed my uh, first thoughts on AABB. I did, I sold um, two thirds of what I own, which is a lot, um, today and yesterday, because I'm hoping for uh, for it to dip and buy and buy into the dip. So, but we can't time the market, right? We can just hope. The reason why I usually don't do this, but the reason why I did this this time is because I was trying to buy, 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 but it took off before I was able to buy. And I was not able to get the number of shares that I needed, that I needed um, to, to have. Um, so that's the reason why I took a risk. So I hope it goes down so I can, so I can add more to the position. So that's what my thinking is on AABB at the moment. Sober trades, yes. I, I hopefully hope that Monerico will do well. But obviously, you know, we think we think that these companies may go to a dollar, but it really depends on their where they go. Um, so we, we almost have to follow them and every single like every single quarter, every single developments. Um, I, I give you an example, okay? I was doing this research on this company with a friend. And it, it, it was an electric vehicle play. Everything looked good. I mean, we spent two hours looking into, into researching everything, right? And then I went on to, um, and then I think I went into this, this um, a stock twit account or something like this. And I found a little snippet about something about a C, the CEO being part of some fraud scheme or something. Lo and behold, he, he was actually brought to court because of a um because of a fraud investigation so after that i was like i'm not touching this company at all so we just never know what's going to happen what's going to transpire after these companies for that reason we have to be very uh keen on our dd and continue to research because you know they may have a good they may have a good uh they may have a good play they may have they may have money that's backing them up they may have enough investors but if their execution is wrong then they may not get to a dollar i hope you guys understand what i'm saying so there is nothing for sure in life that's for for that reasons we have to continue to give you to have updates on our place um okay how <laughs> Ron Bang asking about AMC. Okay. I I actually bought AMC a few months ago. No, not a few months ago, in January, when it was like $2 or so. But I sold before all this Wall Street bet stuff. If you want my honest advice on AMC, I think that they're a better place. And I'll just leave it as that. Hi, Roy. Thank you for your positive support. Um, I do have a Discord for um, for members who've joined. I, I started this Discord a few days ago, uh, last week, and so folks who've joined have have posed ask uh, have posed questions, and I have been um, answering questions as well as looking at portfolios and giving them my thoughts on their portfolio, things like this that are things that some join members have asked me to do, and I've been very happy. You know, I'm happy to help. Uh, okay, Roy, uh, I did a, a due diligence on OZSC. So if you go back, I first um, covered this company about a month ago or so. So search in my channel. It's, you know, it has like, I think that video had like 9,000 view or something. So go into it and, 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 and watch that video. You should get a, a lot of information on it. 
More, more. Cảm ơn. Okay. Không có gì. Uh, that was Vietnamese. So you guys know I'm Vietnamese and I speak Vietnamese. So I appreciate, I, I love it when I see, um, you know, uh, people sending me salutations in Vietnamese. I appreciate that. Uh, can I touch on TSNPD? Okay. I also have a big holding on TSNPD. Uh, unfortunately, it just took off before I was able to load up. I was, you know, I, when I first started to buy on buy TSNPD, it was at 29 cents. Um, unfortunately, I was so focused on other stuff. I did not, the bulk of, of it, I was not able to load up until much later. I have been trying to average down on TSNPD. In my personal opinion, I think TSNPD will go very far. For that reason, I'm not, I'm not selling TSNPD. NMTR. Okay, so um, I I hope when you say NMTR, this NMTR is it that the uh, I think it's that fishing company, right? I think this was one of my mistakes. Oh, right. Okay, NMTR. I cover this uh, when I first uh, when I first uh, started the channel. Um, since an MTR, uh, I, I sold an MTR already. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think an MTR is a bad play. It's a good play, but I have been buying more penny stocks for that reason. I sold an MTR. Carlos Mejia, how many shares do you, I normally buy? Uh, that's a very big question. It depends on um, <laughs> it depends on the company. Uh, so, so you know, with AAB, I bought about I bought three times or four times, I think, and each time is about I don't know, I can't remember, like a hundred thousand shares or something like that. It's been it's been long. I don't remember, but. For companies that I am bullish on, I buy, I spend a lot. I buy in huge bulk. Okay. Um, all right. I think the hour is up. Um, and I'm so sorry that I'm not able to get through all your questions. Uh, but I will, I, I will try to go live again. But I will make sure that I, I give you guys an announcement um, before I do that. Um, but stay tuned for this week. I'll be releasing more videos for you guys, um, on my plays. Um, and before I end the live stream, I really appreciate all of your support. I really mean it. And, uh, you know, a few things has happened that makes me want to like stop, uh, my YouTube channel. Um, but because of your support and because of your positive support, uh, it just, you know, I, I feel so, um, I feel so supported. It gives me it gives me energy. Uh, so, you know, thank you. Continue to support me, and uh, we'll try to, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll try to get through this this together. I know that this whole correction has been very difficult for people. I mean, looking at looking at you know uh, red days and looking at your portfolio and seeing forty percent down and fifty percent down is quite tough. I know that. So. You know, I know that some of you, some some people have taken their frustration out on me, uh, you know, saying that my picks are horrible. Uh, that's I'm the reason why they're down. But I didn't say anything back because I know that's, you know, if they're having a tough, tough time dealing with the whole market corrections. So just hang in there. Um, things can't go back down. Things that goes down, if it goes down, eventually it will go back up. So just be patient, okay? Curtis Martin, yes, I, um, you know, I, I love to, I love to see, um, you know, there was, I think one of my most touching moments when I started this channel was there was a single mother who, who told me 
that she um, made money off of my picks. I think it was BNGO that she bought into. And I think she made 200 or $300 on that play. And when she told me how excited she was, it almost like brought me to tears just because I can't imagine that it was, it was, um, it was such a touching moment for me because I was able to have that impact on her. And I know that 200 or $300 meant a lot for her. So you guys can always rest assured that I'm not one of those people that will release a video just to get views. That's not me. Honestly, I don't make my money from views. I promise you, views do not make do not give me that much money. I only release videos that I myself buy into it. So basically, if if it's a bad buy and if it goes down, you know, I'm sinking with you guys. So that I can guarantee. Okay. So yeah, I mean, sober trades, you, you definitely, you know, you understand, right? Because, you know, sometimes it's, you know, you have all these people that give you positive vibes and, you know, they're, they're, um, you know, they're, they're, they're telling you, oh my God, Andrew, you've, you know, you, I was able to make money off of this trade and that makes you so happy for me. That's, you know, that's what giving me the energy to do this. Um, and then, then you have, you know, on the other hand, you have all those, you know, negative Nancy, uh, you know, so that's a little discouraging. And, and in fact, this whole week, you know, I was telling my fiance, I said, I just, I don't want to do this anymore. I mean, I, I don't see what I have to gain from doing this YouTube when people just dump their negative negativity on me. Uh, I, I don't want to do this anymore. But she did tell me, you know what, Andrew, there's all these people that says, that said that they benefited from all of this. And especially with that single mother, that was my favorite story was the single mother who made two or three hundred dollars off of BNGO. I, I just said, you know, that that gave me a lot of um, reason for why I should be doing this. Yeah, that, that's that's um, that's true. So. Um, so that, that I have probably have to to end the first live uh, because I um, I have to go. But uh, you know, thanks again for for showing up and all your questions. We'll try to schedule more uh, sessions like this. Um, I just didn't think that people would show up and support me in this way. So again, you guys are always um, you know like I I, I truly support. I, I truly I, I'm truly honored. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Take care, everyone. I'll see you guys on the next recording. <laughs> Curtis Martin. Yeah, that's my goal. I want to buy a Tesla. How did you know? Curtis, how did you know that I wanted to buy a Tesla? <laughs> um, anyways, have a good day, everyone. And I will see everyone soon. Thank you.